Some practical advice I have for community oncologists taking care of the occasional iodine refractory DTC patient. Um, these patients are, are, are not all that common and, and many people don't have the opportunity to see a lot of patients and gain a lot of experience with, with DTC. Um, I do think it's important to have a handle on the natural history of the disease. It's also important to make sure that patients have iodine refractory disease. The fact that they've gotten radioactive iodine in the past is not equivalent to uh, a diagnosis of iodine refractory disease. That's a good conversation to have with, with an endocrinologist who knows the patient well. Uh, it's also important, I think, to uh, know the uh, uh, pace of disease. Um, if, if patients have very indolent disease, very low burden disease, they may not need to start therapy right away. Um, however, there, all of the data that we do have indicate that when patients have progressive disease, earlier initiation of of an MKI like lenbatinib does seem to have better activity than withholding initiation of therapy for too long. We also now have um, a lot of very encouraging data that indicate that, that new therapies for these patients in terms of gene-specific therapy um, are available. We've seen um, most recently, for example, that a Approximately 10 or 11 percent of patients with iodine refractory DTC will have tumors that are driven by RET fusions, and RET-specific therapy, particularly with salpicatinib, um, um, is now FDA-approved for these patients with iodine refractory disease. A second RET inhibitor, pralcetinib, has been studied and also is showing very good um, uh, 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 results uh, in the phase one and phase two experience. Other gene-directed uh, therapy also is FDA approved for patients with NTREC fusion-driven thyroid cancer. And then we've seen activity with other gene-specific approaches that haven't yet uh, been uh, studied in large enough studies to lead to FDA approvals, um, but BRAF-specific therapy, for example, um, has been studied and we have data along those lines as well. When taken as a whole, a majority of patients uh, with iodine refractory DTC will harbor gene alterations that are potentially act actionable. So I do think that there's a role for molecular diagnostics in most of the patients uh, with advanced thyroid cancer at some point in the course of their illness.